Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I got another baseball game for you. This is another Mismatch Monday. And today, we have some firsts going on. Um, one of the firsts is, as you can see, or maybe you don't notice, but this is a new board that I have made. I had a, a mat made by Inked Gaming. And I will put the link to Inked Gaming in the uh, description in case you want to get your own play mat done. But um, this uh, was inspired by an idea I got after I saw that uh, ID Jester had made, had had a, a play mat made of uh, the Status Pro board. And um, I've kind of uh, gotten away from doing Status Pro Baseball. I may do it again in the future, um, and I may even get the uh, Status Pro um, Baseball board um, from the, uh, the template that uh, ID Jester sent me. But that gave me the idea, why don't I make the Stratomatic board into a play mat? And so I did that. And by doing that, I was also able to add a, some extras like the uh, Stratomatic logo here under the picture, under the photo or the, the uh, picture of the picture. I was also able to put my um, logo up here and Major League Baseball up in the corner. So um, that is uh, uh, a nice addition. And I've added a, not really a scoreboard, but at least, you know, an inning tracker. So like, um, you know, right here is the top of the first, then we can go to the bottom of the first, then the top of the second. So that no matter where you pick up, if you're listening to the game and then you look up, you'll be able to see... Uh, what inning we're in. Now the score, you're going to have to follow along with the score. I didn't put a scoreboard in here. And I was trying to think of ways to make this work as a scoreboard, but the the squares are too small and you, I would have to tape something in here because uh, with rolling the dice or whatever, uh, you know, going along in the course of the game, you would get, they might fall off. And you know, so anyway, so we got the new board. Uh, these are fake dice right here. So I've got the real dice over here that I'm rolling. But these are fake dice that were in the photo that I thought was kind of cool. Um, we are also doing the... Uh, uh, I should even really m mention who the matchup is. Um, this is going to be the, the 1981 Toronto Blue Jays against the 1981 Milwaukee Brewers. Now, um, <clears throat> as, uh, as you may or may not know, the 81 cards are not set up for ballpark effects. So we are not playing with ballpark effects. Um, and Milwaukee is going to be home. I decided to have Milwaukee be home in kind of a chain from the norm. Normally I have the underdog team playing at home and the better team on the road, but I'm going to switch that up this time. So that's a lot of new stuff that's going on. But anyway, the 1981 uh, Brewers were, um, the, 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 in 1981, as you'll recall, was the strike-shortened season. The 81 Brewers were 62-47 and 47 and finished in first place in the AL East. The Toronto Blue Jays were 37-69 and 69 and finished in last in the AL East. So you got the first-place team against the... Uh, the uh, top team, or the uh, the bottom team, the bottom place team. So, with all of that having been said, let's get on with this game. Um, the lineup for the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, who will be batting first, is Damaso Garcia at second, Lloyd Mosby in center field, Otto Velez at DH, John Mayberry at first, George Bell will be the right fielder, Garth Orge will be at third. Al Woods will be the left fielder. Alfredo Griffin is at shortstop. And Buck Martinez will be the catcher. Uh, pitching today for the um, uh, Milwaukee Brewers against that lineup will be Mr. Mike Caldwell. And Mike Caldwell in 1981 was 11-9 with a 394 earned run average. 
So now, with all of that out of the way, let's get going. Damaso Garcia is the batter. He gets a 2-9, and uh, let's see. He Caldwell's a lefty, so that is going to be a ground ball shortstop. So he's out. He's out 6-3, and Mosby is up. Lloyd Mosby. I'm surprised some of these guys were as bad as they were. Um, that is going to be a line out to second base. Two away, and Otto Velez, and he gets a 3-8, and that is going to be a strikeout. And Caldwell with his first strike out of the game. And we go to the bottom of the first. Now, i got to remember to do that <laughs> every time. But anyway, Robin Yount is up. And he gets a 3-9. I'm going to call it a 3-9. And uh, Steve is a... Oh, Dave Steve, by the way, is the pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. And we should go over their line, the Milwaukee lineup. The Milwaukee lineup will be Robin Young at shortstop, Cecil Koopa at first base, Paul Molitor in right. The cleanup hitter is Gorman Storman Thomas in center field. Ben Ogilvy will be the fifth batter and playing left field. Ted Simmons, Hall of Famer, will be the catcher. Roy Howell is at third. Jimmy Gantner at second. And Mark Bruhard will be the DH. And uh, that was... A that was a single. Robin Yount getting a single off the righty Steeb. And Steeb gives up a hit. And Steeb, by the way, in 1981, the strike shortened season was 11 and 10 with a 318 earned run average in 184 innings. Cecil Koopa. He comes up, and he gets a 3-3, and that's going to be a pop-out to shortstop. One down, man at first, and Paul Molitor. And Paul Molitor gets a 3-10, which is a hit by pitch. So the Blue Jays have two guys on here. Or the uh, Brewers, I mean, have two guys on. And Steve with a hit batter. And Gorman Thomas, the cleanup hitter, is up, and he gets a 6-8. And that is going to be a fly ball to right field two away. Which leaves it up to Ben Ogilvy, And he gets a 1-6, and that's going to be a fly to center. So, no runs have come in for either team, and we go to the top of the second inning with John Mayberry up. And he gets a 5-11, John Mayberry does, and uh, against Caldwell. And uh, that is going to be a fly ball right field X. So, the right fielder for the... Um, for the Blue Jays is, oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, the right fielder, the right fielder for the, uh, for the Brewers is Molitor, and Molitor is a 3E10, and that is a 1. That's probably going to be an out, but I have to go get the charts. So 3E10, let's see. Yeah, oh wait, wait. No, that's gonna be uh that's gonna be a double. That is indeed a double. So we take all of these off of here, put a guy up there at second, and Mayberry leads off with a double. And that is a first hit allowed for Caldwell, which brings up George Bell. And he gets a 2-6. Um, 
And that's going to be a ground ball shortstop. One away. Garth Orge is up. Uh, he gets a 110. 110. That's going to be a ground ball shortstop. Two away. And Al Woods is the batter. <clears throat> and he gets a 1-5. And that is a single to left field. And they are going to take a look at the left fielder's arm. The left fielder's arm is a plus two. Let's see. Are we looking at the right? Um, no, no, it's a zero. So um, let's see. And the runner is, ah, uh, the runner is Mayberry. He's not going to be a good runner. No, he isn't. So uh, they're going to just let runners stay at the corners, two down. And they will leave it up to Alfredo Griffin. But Caldwell gives up his second hit. And he gets a 4-7. He's a switch hitter, so he would be batting um, right against Caldwell. That's going to be a ground ball second base X. The second baseman for the Brewers is Gantner, and Gantner is a 2E14. That is a 6. That might be an out. And it is. So, then he goes out 4-3, to three and no runs come in in the top of the second. We go to the bottom of the second. And the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the second for the Brewers, for the Brew Crew, is going to be Hall of Famer Ted Simmons. And he gets a 5-10. He is a switch hitter, so he would be batting left. And that is a catcher card X. And the uh, Blue Jays catcher is a 2-E-4. And that is a 6 And uh, that is going to be a wild pitch followed by Papa. So that is, there's one down. Roy Howell is up in the third baseman. He gets a 2-9, and that's going to be a fly ball right field, two away. And that brings up Jimmy Gantner, the second baseman. And he gets a 6-5. He's batting left, and that is going to be a line out to short. So no runs come in for Milwaukee there, and um, we go to the top of the third inning. Top of the third inning, and the batter is Buck Martinez, the catcher. And also an announcer, I believe, right now for the Blue Jays. He gets a 3-8. And that is going to be a ground ball third base. So he's out five to three. One down. Damaso Garcia gets a 4-12. 4-12, and he's batting right, and that's going to be a fly ball left field. And uh, Lloyd Mosby is up. And he gets a 5-8, batting left. That's a fly ball center field. Yeah. So no runs come in in the third. We go to the bottom of the third. <clears throat> no score here. Mark Bruhard will be the leadoff hitter for the, um, for the Brewers. And he gets a 6-9. And that is going to be a fly ball center field. One away. Robin Young is up. He gets a 2-11. And that is going to be a pop out to second base. And Cecil Cooper. 
and he gets a 5-12. And the 5-12 is a ground ball, uh, wait a minute, is a ground ball second base X. The second baseman for the Blue Jays is <clears throat> a 2-E-23, and that is a 16. And uh, that's going to be an out. Ground out. Four to three. And we go to the top of the fourth. Moving right along here. No runs scored yet. Steve and Caldwell in a pitcher's duel. And Otto Velez is the batter. He gets a 1-8. And 1-8 uh, against a lefty is going to be a walk. And so Caldwell walks his first batter of the game. <clears throat> And John Mayberry is up. John Mayberry got aboard last time, but this time he is going to fly out to right field. One away, one man on. George Bell is up, and he gets a 6-8. Six, 6-8, eight. Six, eight, and uh, that is going to be uh, a walk, another walk. So Caldwell walks another guy. They, the uh, Blue Jays have two runners on with only one out. And Garth Orge is up. He gets a 1-3. That's going to be a pop-out to short for the second out. And Al Woods is the batter. And he gets a 3-9, and a 3-9 is going to be a pop-out to third base. And no runs coming in for Toronto in the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth with Paul Molitor, the leadoff hitter for Milwaukee. And he gets a 6-10, <clears throat> and that's going to be a fly ball to right to... Uh, to center field. The center fielder for the Blue Jays is a 4E5. Not good there. Nine. And that's going to be on his um, error rating. And that's a seven. Seven on an E9 is a fly ball B. So Molitor flies out to center. One down, and Gorman Thomas up. He gets a 4-6. He is a right-handed batter, and that is going to be a walk. So Thomas works his way aboard with a walk, and I believe that's the first walk issued by Steve. Yes, it is. He did hit a batter, but that's the first walk without hitting somebody. <laughs> Ben Ogilvy <clears throat> gets a 4-8. And 4-8 is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Um, the second baseman for the uh, Blue Jays is a 2-E-23. That is a 13. So let's see. That's going to be a uh, ground ball B. So there's two down. And that brings up Ted Simmons. And he gets a 1 7, and uh, that is going to be a strikeout. Or wait a minute, no. No, it's going to be a ground ball, uh, first base B. And no runs come in <clears throat> in the fourth for the Brewers. And we go to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth, Alfredo Griffin is up. 
he gets a 610, he would be batting right against Caldwell, and that is going to be a catcher card X. And the catcher for the um, Brewers is a 3E9. 3E9 with a 15 roll is going to be an out. One down. And Alfredo Griffin is up. Or not, wait, is it Alfredo Griffin? No, it's Martin, Buck Martinez. And he gets a 4-8. 4-8 is going to be a, whoa, whoa, that is a triple, a triple for Buck Martinez, wow, so Buck Martinez finds himself on, uh, on third base, 90 feet away with only one out. And Damaso Garcia up. He gets a 6-10. And that is going to be a catcher card X. Now, if there's a pass ball, that's going to be a run. Um, he is a 3-E-9. And that's a 17. 17-3 17, pass ball followed by foul out. So a run does score. It's a second out, though. But the run scores. And that brings up Mosby. And he gets a 5'11. And 5'11 is going to be a fly ball to the left fielder. The left fielder for the Brewers is a 3E6. That is a 2. That might be something, too. That is, it's a double. So Mosby hits a double. Two big hits this inning off of uh, off Caldwell. Uh, one resulted in a run, and we'll see if the other one does as well. We have Otto Velez up. And he gets a 2-5, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Caldwell strikes out his second guy, but Caldwell did allow... Um, the first run of the game. And so the Blue Jays ended up uh, striking for one run there. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth with Roy Howell as the leadoff hitter for Milwaukee. He gets a 2-4, which is going to be a double. Yep. Yupper. So now the big hits are starting to fall. Um, a double off Steve. That's only the second hit he's allowed. Jim Gantner is up. You know what? They're going to sac. I think they're going to sacrifice with Gantner. And he is a bunting A. That's an 11, though. Batter is safe. Leading runner is thrown out. Terrible roll, and so Gantner is safe at first. Bruhard is up. Mark Bruhard. He gets a 5-4. He is uh, batting left. And, um, yep, against Steve. Um, what was that? 5-4. That's going to be another possible um, triple. Let's see. Yep, it is. It's a triple and it knocks in a run. So Bruhard, of all people, gets a triple and knocks in a run and ties the game. 
and he's 90 feet away with um, with Robin Yauta. And he gets a 110, and a 110 is going to be a ground ball shortstop A. And I don't think runners advance on that. Yeah, runners hold. So he's still 90 feet away, but now there's two outs. And Cecil Cooper, the batter. And he gets a 110, and that is going to be a single and knock in the second and go-ahead run. And Paul Molitor is now the batter. And he gets a 5-12. And that's going to be a ground ball first base. But the Brewers strike for two runs in the same inning that Milwaukee got one. Or the, in the same inning that Toronto got one. And so we will go to the top of the sixth inning with the score, Milwaukee 2, Toronto 1, and John Mayberry, the batter. He gets a 4-5, and that's going to be a ground ball second base, one away. George Bell is up. He gets a 4-6, and I believe that is... No, that wait. That's gonna be that's gonna be an out. It's gonna be a line out to second. Two away, and Garth Orge gets a four six, and that is going to be a line out to second. No runs come in. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Gorman Storm and Thomas is up. Lead-off batter here in the bottom of the sixth for Milwaukee. He gets a 6-9. That is going to be a fly ball to center, one away. That brings up Ogilvy. Ogilvy gets a 3-5, and that's going to be a fly ball to right. And Ted Simmons is up. And he gets a 4-10. He would be batting left against Steve. And that is going to be a pop-out to first base. No runs come in. We go to the top of the seventh. Now you can see one flaw with my scoreboard is that it only goes nine innings. So if there's an extra inning game... I, I would probably just have to take the token off and you just have to follow from there. But anyway, that doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it only happens maybe less than 10% of the time. So Al Woods is up. Al Woods gets a 3-6. And uh, yeah, let's see here. 3-6 is going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for Milwaukee is Yount, and he is a 2E14, that is an 11. And that's going to be on his, we got to refer to his error rating, so we'll roll the dice again, that's a 9. And a 9 is a ground ball. So Woods goes out 6-3 to three here in the 7th. Getting late for Toronto, but they're only down by a run. And Alfredo Griffin is up. And he gets a 3-7. He would be batting right. and uh, Or he's batting against the lefty. And that is a ground ball third base. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, it's a line out to first base. 
Line out three, and Buck Martinez, who has a triple in this game, a run scored. And he gets a 3-10, and that's going to be a ground ball to third base. And that takes us to the bottom of the seventh inning. Still 2-1 Brewers with Roy Howell as the leadoff hitter here for the Brewers. He gets a 6-8. And 6-8 uh, against a righty, that's going to be a double. Yes, that is going to be a double. And is that the second? Yes, that is the second double for Roy Howell. So another uh, big hit allowed by Steve. And Jim Gantner, they're going to try it again. They're going to sacrifice again, even though it didn't work last time. Seven, it probably worked this time. Batter is thrown up by first baseman runners advance. So now they've got a runner 90 feet away. <clears throat> and uh, only one out, and the Brewers will bring the infield in. <clears throat> For Mark Bruhart. Or, I mean, the uh, the Blue Jays will bring the infield in. 6-7. <clears throat> and 6-7 uh, is a strikeout. That is exactly what Steve needed. And it's only his first strikeout of the game is what I've got. And Robin Young gets a 1-6, and that is going to be a ground ball to shortstop. So... Despite the fact that they uh, that they got a man to third with only one out, they they don't score, and that's exactly why I don't like sacrifices. I don't like sacrifices because you're giving the other team an out, and there's no guarantee you're going to score, and the Brewers didn't score right there. So, Damaso Garcia is up in the top of the eighth here. And he gets a 4-6. Both pitchers still out there. In fact, both pitchers pitched enough in a strike-shortened season that they would still be good to go right now, in my opinion. 4-6 uh, is a righty. And um, that, and he's batting against uh, Caldwell, and that's a strikeout. One away. Lloyd Mosby gets a 6-7. That's going to be a walk. So Lloyd Mosby does get his uh, get his way on. Caldwell with another walk allowed. That's his third walk allowed of the game. Otto Velez gets a 3-2. And that is going to be a double. Let's see. Wait a minute. No, that's going to be a home run. He's batting against uh, lefty. Yes, that's a home run. Out of the park. Gone. So Caldwell gets jumped on here. And now there will be action in the, uh, in the Milwaukee pen. And they're going to get Jamie Easterly up in the bullpen. Now, one of the problems with the 81, like this is the 81 original issue set without extras. So there aren't very many guys on each roster <coughs> that I have the, uh, you know, availability of. John Mayberry is up with one out. And that is a 5-2. And that's going to be a fly ball left, two away. And George Bell is up. And that is a 5-7. And that is going to be a fly ball to center. So they strike the... the um, yeah. The uh, Blue Jays strike for two right there. And they have a 3-2 to two lead now on the Brewers. 
and you know that the uh, the Blue Jays are going to stick with Steve, and Cecil Cooper is the batter. He gets a 3-4, and uh, that's going to be a ground ball first base, one away. And a reminder, the um, the underdog in these series or in these games has not won very much. I think they've only won two or three times, and I've done it like maybe 15 times so far. Paul Molitor is up. He's got a 1-6. That's going to be a ground ball short. And that brings up Gorman, Storm, and Thomas. And he gets a 1-8, and that is a strikeout. When Steve with the with the K, we go to the top of the ninth, and I didn't uh, move the thing that particular half inning. But anyway, we are in the top of the ninth with Garth Orge up and Jamie Easterly will come on for Caldwell. Jamie Jamie Easterly in 1981 was three and three with a 319 earned run average. So he is the new Milwaukee pitcher, and Garth Orge is the batter. And he gets a 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two, and Easterly is a lefty, just like Caldwell was, and that's going to be a line out to third base, one away. Al Woods is up. Al Woods gets a 6-10. 6-10 um, is going to be a ground ball to the third baseman. And the third baseman for the Brewers is a 4-E-20. And that's a 4. That's probably going to be something. Yes, it is. It's a double. So Al Woods ripping a double in the Toronto Blue Jays, giving the uh, Brewers a little bit of a problem here with Alfredo Griffin. Up. And he gets a 2-6, and that's going to be a pop-out to short. And Buck Martinez is the batter. Now, Buck Martinez today has a triple and a run scored, and he gets a 5-8. And uh, that is going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman for the Brewers is a 2E14. Um, that is a 5, so we'll see what that is. That is a ground ball, so that is it for the Blue Jays in the ninth. They get no runs there, and we go to the bottom of the ninth. The Brewers have to have... At least one run to keep the game going, and two to win it. And Ben Ogilvy is up. Steve is still out there. I mean, he's pitched great. But right there, he allows a single. Ben Ogilvy gets a hit. That's only the sixth hit allowed by Steve this game, though. Ted Simmons is up, and he gets a 3-5. And 3-5 is going to be a walk. Well, the Brewers have that threat going, and so the um, Blue Jays will start to get um, action up in their bullpen. They're going to get Joey McLaughlin up. Roy Howell is the batter. They thought that, uh, that Steve could handle it, but now it doesn't look like he can. And uh, a 5-4 is a double, and that scores at least a run. Massive comeback here by the Brewers. Um, so let's see. Steve allowed a walk, and then he allowed another hit, seventh hit. Um, the, um, the run doesn't score, but with no outs, they're not going to try to extend it either. Um, wait a minute, double, yes it does, because, yeah, I think the tying run does score, right, because there was runners at first and 
second. Yeah, and then and then there was a double. So yes, the run does score. And now there's runners at second and third. The infield has to come in. And Jim Gantner is the batter. And they've been sacrificing with him, but they're not going to do that now. And he gets a 1-8. And that's, that's going to be a walk and load the bases up. And they are going to bring in McLaughlin. Steve just completely fell apart here. And um, he walked his third guy of the game. And Bruhart is the batter with no outs and the bases loaded. The infield's in for the Blue Jays. And the game is already tied. And that is a 6-3 righty. And uh, that's going to be a ground ball first base X. Uh, the first baseman is for the uh, for the Blue Jays is a 3-E-11. And that's a 17. Um, let's see. 17-3. Seventeen three is a ground ball B, and uh, let's see with the infield in. Ground ball B, batter is safe, runner on third is out, so that is one down. And that brings up Robin Yount. He's going to have a shot at trying to win this game for the Brewers. He gets a five six. And that is going to be a strikeout to away. So Easterly comes in and he just slams the door so far. And now the infield is back for the Blue Jays and Cecil Cooper is up. And, or for the uh, Brewers. And that is a 4-4. Four, four. Cecil Cooper with a 4-4. Four, four, and that is going to be... A fly ball center field. Um, fly ball center field X. And the center fielder for the um, uh, for the uh, Blue Jays is a 4E5. You don't want to see that. That's a 15. 15 and 4, and that's going to be a single double asterisk that knocks in two runs and gives the uh, Blue Jays the win. And they win, uh, I'm going to say two runs scored on that, so um, even though the first run that scored won the game, so they win it, um, I'm just going to call it 5-3. Uh, to three. With uh, Milwaukee winning, they come in, they pull it out in the end. Steve was cruising for eight innings. He was absolutely on cruise control, and then he just fell apart. And that's going to be it for me. Sportsmanzy, Bob Zolke, signing off.